Hey guys, welcome to the English Made Simple show. This is episode number 245, number 245, numero 245. And welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, amigos y amigas. Uh, my name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net, EnglishMadeSimple.net. Hope everybody's fine and dandy. Today's show is a bit different. We're going to jump straight into it. Uh, today's show um, is different. We're going to go back in time. We are going to travel back in time, going all the way uh, back to episode number 64. So a couple of years in the past. For some of you, this would be a brand new episode. And if you've been following me for the past three years, this probably is a, an old, an oldie but a goodie type of episode. Okay. There's a lot of, um, good things in there for you to learn. So I decided to replay this particular episode, number 64, because it's so relevant now before uh, these holidays before the end of the year, before Christmas. So before I play this episode, I wanted to just uh, say something. I pulled this episode out of the EMS archive, uh, where I used to have uh, short and sweet type of episodes teaching you about English expressions. Uh, then there were some episodes about uh, talking about cultural um, histories and learning about different culture, customs and all that, and also some grammar as well. For example, in episode number 64, we were learning about homophones and we learned about what they were. And I think you will find today's episode quite interesting. Okay. And um, also I need to say that I used to use more Spanish words uh, before and just, you know, heads up to those people who are non-Spanish speakers, <laughs> you might be surprised. Uh, however, having said that, it's still easy to follow the episode. Uh, there aren't too many Spanish words. There is a lot of gold nuggets in here, amigos y amigas. So anyway, before further ado, uh, let's play this episode. Here it comes. Enjoy it. <laughs> Guess what? I saw a sign outside the shop uh, today. It said, Nine sleeps till Christmas. This is how people normally count down towards a holiday. So in this case, it's Christmas. We can say nine days to go or nine sleeps to go until Christmas. Basically, we have to sleep nine times before the actual Christmas. <laughs> It's a bit of a literal translation, but you know what I mean. Nine sleeps till Christmas. That's all we have. So, welcome guys. Thank you for joining me. In this episode, I want to mention something called homophones. Homophones refer to words that sound the same, but they are spelt differently and have a different meaning. It's a grammar term, homophone. There is also another word, homonyms, which we'll cover next time. Homonyms refer to words that are spelt the same, but they have different meanings. So English language is full of these kind of words, okay? It's full of these confusing words. <laughs> I struggled with this in the beginning um, when I was learning English, but the more you practice, the easier it gets. So don't worry, be happy. So I'll give you an example of homophones. For example, the past tense of the verb to eat, comer, eat. The past tense is ate. It's spelled as A-T-E, three letters. But when we talk about numbers, we say eight for number eight, numero ocho, eight. And it's spelled differently. It's spelled E-I-G-H-T. So I had a question uh, posted in Facebook group from Max from Brazil regarding these uh, same sounding words with different meanings. He brought this up a few months ago and I have finally found some time to prepare an episode about it. So good question, Max. So I, I thought to myself, if Max had a question like this about homophones, then I bet the majority of you will have 
the same question. Cool. So I will cover this in today's episode. Uh, I also want to talk about holidays in general, in particular, what to say at the time of celebrations. How do people celebrate uh, Christmas in Australia and New Zealand? Why do we say Merry Christmas and not Happy Christmas, for example? So there is a lot to cover in this episode. So sit back and uh, enjoy the show. Are you ready, amigos? Let's start, shall we? I want to start off with Christmas holidays first. It's a short topic and uh, then I'll start talking about the homophones because the word Merry is kind of a homophone. It's part of the homophone family. So when I moved from Eastern Europe to New Zealand, I found it quite strange that people celebrate Christmas on the beach, La Playa. In Serbia, we celebrated it in the snow, con nieve. As kids, I remember we played in the snow and uh, we used to build a snowman. So for kids, the snow is really fun. But for adults, it's probably not so fun because when you have to shovel the snow every morning before going to work, it's not really, it's not really a fun time, <laughs> not an enjoyable experience. I remember my dad used to shovel the snow every morning before going to work. He would wake up at 5 a.m. and just clear the snow. It's oh, it's hard work, hard work. Where I come from, New Year is kind of a bigger celebration. Uh, we give presents for New Year, not really for Christmas. We also have a Christmas tree, Arbol de Navidad. We would decorate Christmas trees. Um as well, like they do here in Australia and New Zealand. But our Christmas is actually on the 7th of January. It's Orthodox Christmas. It's celebrated differently. So yeah, when we moved as a family to New Zealand, we had to adjust. We had to adapt to different customs. However, in Australia and New Zealand, people would celebrate Christmas on the beach. There is also a three-day public holiday That's great news uh, if you have to work because we don't work on Christmas Day, Boxing Day and New Year's Day. Boxing Day. What is a Boxing Day? Uh, is there a day when people do boxing? They hit each other? <laughs> no, not at all. It's to do with Christmas gifts. It is on the day after Christmas Day and it is strictly on a work day. It's on the 26th of December. And Boxing Day is uh, marked in the UK and other Commonwealth nations, including New Zealand and Australia. Boxing Day originated in England in the 19th century when the servants were required to work on the Christmas Day and then allowed to visit their families the next day. They would be given Christmas boxes, like gifts containing money or similar. So this is called a Boxing Day And it's just another day when people don't work, okay? It's a public holiday. Okay, so that was a bit of a history trivia for you. And uh, if you're a cricket fan, I know I have some listeners from Pakistan, India, and Sri Lanka. There is a famous Boxing Day game in Australia uh, for cricket fans. I have to say, I don't know much about cricket, But I know it is another famous sport in Australia and New Zealand. And on every Boxing Day, there is a game of cricket called Boxing Day Test or Boxing Day Match. I apologize to the cricket fans if I got this one wrong. I see it often advertised on TV and I thought, mm, maybe I should bring that up. Maybe I should mention it. <laughs> okay, so in Australia and New Zealand, we would play something called Kris Kringle or Secret Santa, Amigo Secreto. We would celebrate this uh, on Christmas Day with friends and family. I think it is similar in Chile. When I was in Chile, my Chilean family would play Amigo Secreto. So for those of you who don't know it, uh, what this means is you pick a random name from a hat and you are not allowed to share this name with anyone. So if you selected a name, you have to buy a present for that person. And that person shouldn't even know that it is you who is buying the present. 
because it's supposed to be a secret. That's called Secret Santa. And people would play this at work or they would play it with family and friends, okay? If you're planning to move to New Zealand or Australia or any other English-speaking country, you should remember to say a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays during the Christmas break. Everywhere you go, any shop you visit, people would say Merry Christmas. Why do we say Merry Christmas and not Happy Christmas? Hmm, good question. So normally we would say, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. You will hear this in the movies. Saying Happy Christmas is not incorrect. You are not wrong to say Happy Christmas, but it is not as common. I think it's more common in the UK. They can say Happy Christmas. It's not wrong, but it's not common. Cool? Okie dokie, are you with me so far? Hopefully. Now, this is a nice segue into homophones. I want to introduce you to this grammar term, homophones. Homophones, the words that sound the same, but have different spelling and different meaning. And English language is full of this. So, for example, I use the word Merry Christmas. The word Merry, which is spelt as M E R R Y, is an adjective. And it means cheerful and lively, okay? Happy. I would say happy, but it's cheerful. It's more cheerful. The word Mary, which is spelt as M-A-R-R-Y, is a verb and it means to get married or to take in marriage. Another meaning is to join together or to combine harmoniously. There could be a difference in pronunciation between Mary and Mary, but every time I hear these words, to me, they sound the same. Mary and Mary. So one is an adjective and one is a verb. They're spelled differently. And guess what? There is also a name, Mary. Mary is a common girl's name in, um, in English. And it is also pronounced the same as those two words that I just mentioned, Mary. If we had to translate Mary, the name Mary, in Spanish, it would be Maria. I have a friend in Serbia and Bulgaria as well called Maria. It's a very popular name, right? Mary, Maria. Anyway, so now we have these three words. Mary is an adjective, Mary is a verb, and Mary is somebody's name. Pronounced the same. Let's see if we can spot the difference when we use all these three words together in a sentence. Let's imagine you have a friend called John, and John is in love with Mary. You say to John, Hey John, it will be a merry moment when you decide to marry Mary. It will be a merry moment when you decide to marry Mary. <laughs> We used all these three words together in a sentence. A merry moment, an adjective describing the moment. It means happy, cheerful moment. And to marry as a verb, marry, marry, marry the name of the girl. <laughs> Okie dokie. Are you with me so far? I hope so. <laughs> Excellent. Hope you're learning some new vocabulary here. That's the idea of today's episode. So now, um, another example I wanted to use is the one from, uh, Max from Brazil. He had a question regarding there, there, and there. <laughs> this is going to be fun. So there, spelled as T H E R E, just means opposite of here, a key. There, a E. Here, a key, okay? Pronounced, pronounced as there. For example, the ball is over there. The second there is a possessive pronoun of they and uh, is usually used before a noun. There is spelled as T H E I R. Pronounced there. For example, 
It is their house. This house belongs to them. It is their house. And uh, the last there <laughs> is a contraction of they plus are, the verb to be. They are. Example, where are they? <laughs> We can answer this as they are there at their house drinking a cup of tea. They are there at their house drinking a cup of tea. They are there, there. They are pronounced the same. All three sound the same but are used differently. Okie dokie. Easy peasy Japanesey. So here we are, amigos, approaching the end of the show. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. We learned some new vocabulary talking about holidays and Christmas. And we also learned about homophones. It's a grammar term. If you are interested to learn more, you are more than welcome uh, to check out uh, homophones on the um, internet. I think there are about 500 words that are classed as homophones in English language. I'm sure you have come across them before. And whether you celebrate Christmas or not, at the end of the day, it's just an excuse to have a party, okay? To have some time off work, to eat a lot, to drink uh, and be merry, you know, be happy. By the way, Christmas is pronounced with a silent T. We don't pronounce the T in that word Christmas. We say Christmas. And uh, guys, if in doubt, when you're not sure wh what to say, uh, whether to say Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas, then just say Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays is quite acceptable for the majority of people who are not necessarily religious. Happy Holidays. And uh, by the way, how are you going with your New Year's resolutions? What is your New Year's resolution? ¿Cuáles son tus deseos para el próximo año? I will remind you again. For those of you who are new to the show, go back and listen to number 63, episode number 63. You will learn more about New Year's resolutions. Thank you for joining me, amigos y amigas. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends. The more, the merrier. There it is. An English saying, the more, the merrier. So there we have it, boys and girls. That was episode number 64, all the way from the past. Okay. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that episode and you've learned a lot. And you've also maybe refreshed your memory. If you've been following me uh, for quite some time, probably this is a repeat episode for you. But anyway, it was still good. All right, amigos. Thank you for joining me in today's flashback episode, episode number 245. Don't forget to check out englishmadesimple.net slash transcripts to download 50 plus episode transcripts so you can seriously start on improving your English listening skills if that's your goal for 2020. And finally, you've been an amazing audience and you've been jamming with Milena from English Made Simple. Until next time, hasta la próxima. Mm -hmm.